Hi, my name is Jason Green. I was a student at OSU studying medicine, but now I come to you with an invention that could save the lives of millions of people. It can end famine, floods, drought, global warming, and literally feed millions of people. And all you need is just a solar panel, some PVC pipe, and some stainless steel <coughs> plates, and you can literally make gas from water and feed millions of people. But <coughs> let's get to the issues. Um, we all need fuel to live our lives, but the fuel, the type of fuel we use, can have a devastating effect on the globe. Antarctica, the world's greatest freezer, is melting. Trillions of gallons are draining into the oceans. Sea levels are rising. It's happened before, and it's happening again, right now. It's not a question of will sea level rise a large amount. It's only a question of how fast that will occur. How will humans fight back before our cities are inundated? Holding off the sea will be the major employer of the world by 2100. Massive levees to defend our coastlines. Floating towns and cities. Vast dams connecting continents. It's our greatest challenge yet, Earth underwater. This is New York in the 24th century. Sea levels have risen by 120 feet. Manhattan is flooded. What could cause such a terrifying scenario? The answer lies here, in Antarctica, where vast amounts of frozen water are locked up in ice. Some of Antarctica's ice sheets are more than two miles thick. If melted, this ice would dramatically raise sea levels. And the melting has already started. Taxi Jackson, please. Scientists want to know how much frozen water the continent actually holds and how much global sea levels will rise if it all melted. So they tell you that carbon dioxide is the biggest contributor to global warming and sea level rising <clears throat> due to it um, trapping the heat that um, comes from the sun. But I'm here to tell you that's a lie. The biggest contributor to global warming is water. And when you burn fuel, you not only produce carbon dioxide, they don't tell you that, they also produce water. You produce twice as much water for every mole of carbon dioxide that you produce. <clears throat> and this water has a um, higher heat valency than um, carbon dioxide. So that's it, it's able to trap more heat and melt more ice, which includes, um, which contributes to sea level rise and also contributes to the ice melting on the polar north sheet. In this diagram, you see that one mole of methane produces two moles of water and only one mole of carbon dioxide. With gasoline, it's even worse. Two moles of gasoline produce 18 moles of water and 16 moles of carbon dioxide. All this excess water to the atmosphere is having a devastating effect on the globe right now with flooding in India, China, 
North Carolina, Pakistan, Vietnam, and that's just this year. Also, it's having a devastating effect on the atmosphere with breathing problems in China and a lot more countries. The fight for fuel can be seen from outer space and you can even see it on the ground. As you can see here, hydrogen produces 3 to 10 times as much energy as any other. This is how my invention is made and the impact it can have on the world. Fabrication company, and not only do they have plenty of scrap metal to choose from, they're even willing to help me cut it to custom sizes. A job that would have taken me hours with a pair of tin snips and a hacksaw only takes a matter of minutes with their equipment. This is 20 gauge stainless steel and this hydraulic punch is being used to cut precise holes in the tops and bottoms of the plates. When finished I have 12 plates measuring 3 inches by 6 inches, 4 plates at 1.5 by 6 inches, and 3 1 inch connector bands that are 6 inches, 4.5 inches, and 3 and a quarter inches. A belt sander is perfect for smoothing down the jagged edges around the hole, and now it's time to head home and get to work. We'll need these 4 inch ABS clean out fittings, 3 8 inch poly tubing, as well as some scrap 4 inch and 2 inch acrylic tubing I found at a plastics company. When I peel the protective layer from the plates, it reveals a beautiful and attractive surface. But that's not what we want for this project. Instead, we'll need to hunt down some sandpaper. This is 100 grit and I'll place two plates in a diamond shape and sand them from top to bottom. Then rotate 90 degrees and repeat. These scuff marks will increase the surface area on the plates and increase the efficiency of the generator. Okay, I've finished off both sides of the plates and you can see the crisscross pattern etched into the metal. The one and a half inch plates are sanded as well, but the three connector bands are not. All right, it's time to cut this acrylic tubing to size, so I'm using a chop saw to trim the edge smooth. Then I'll measure seven inches and cut nice and slowly so that I don't chip the plastic. As the blade cuts, the friction also helps heat the plastic, leaving a fairly clear edge. After I've cut five inches of the two inch tubing, it's time to make some connections. With some gentle persuasion, I've managed to fit the large acrylic tube into the cleanout adapter. But before we push them together, let's add a liberal amount of clear silicone caulking all around the outer base. This will also go on the inside, being very careful not to get any silicone on the threads. Now we can use a rubber hammer to tap the tubing all the way into place and clean up the excess silicone. Paper towel works well, and in a few minutes, it's all cleaned up. Now we can flip this over and repeat the process of attaching, caulking this part and this part, tapping into place and cleaning up the excess. While I'm in the mood for cleaning, I'll use my adhesive remover to assist in cleaning off the UPC stickers, then give everything one final wipe down. I'm gonna seal the bottom with a four inch ABS cleanout plug and some ABS cement. The gooey black cement is applied to the threads of both parts, then I'll use this piece of scrap wood project to help screw it in tight. The excess is removed and we can let it sit here to cure. While that's drying, let's get to work on making the bubbler. I want to attach this quarter inch 90 degree elbow to the cap, so when the stickers are removed, I'll grab my half inch drill bit and a tap. The hole is drilled in the center, then tapped at 18 thread, just before adding pipe tape to the elbow adapter and screwing into place. When that's tight, and I repeated the exact same process with the other cap, I'm happy to see they fit snug on the acrylic tubing. It looks unfinished though, so I'm going to use these top pieces from two trap adapters to slide onto the tubing first, and now when I add the cap, they screw together, giving this piece a clean professional look. Okay, now it's time to work on the generator plates. Similar to the bubbler caps, I'm drilling a half inch hole into the top of the four inch cleanout plug. When that's tapped to 18 thread, we can add pipe tape to a 3 8 inch swivel elbow and screw that into place. You can see that this swivels 360 degrees and that's mostly for convenience. Using a 5 16th drill bit, I'll make holes on either side of the cap and these will be for attaching the generator plates. I cut this hole a little close to the edge, but no problem, my belt sander easily rounded the edges, and now it's a perfect fit. Next, I'll mark the two smaller bands at about two and three quarter inch, and use my bench vise and a rubber hammer to bend them to 90 degree angles. The six inch piece is marked at one and three quarter inches, and four and a quarter inches, then bent into a U shape. A 5 16 coarse thread nylon bolt is cut into two pieces four inches long. I'll get some nylon washers ready, and add two stainless steel jam nuts to the end of each bolt. The bolts are fitted with two of the connector straps and one of the smaller plates, 
Then a plastic washer is added on each bolt. These washers are 3 quarter inches in diameter and about 0.06 inches thick. Another 1 and a half inch plate is added and secured with a nut on each bolt and now the big plates can go on. I'm stacking these in the order of plate, washers, plate, nuts and repeating until I've got a total of 8 plates in place. This is the center of the generator and the other connector strap is added at the top and secured with another nut. I'll add one more nut to the bottom to compensate for the gap and then get back to my routine of adding plate, washers, plate, nuts until I run out of big plates. The two smaller plates are added last and now all we need to do is trim down the bolt ends to about half an inch so we can snap the bottom connector into place, add a nut, and tighten. The other bolt also gets a finishing nut and then is trimmed down and now we just need to turn the generator around and move these screws so that we can tighten the inner ones. The generator plates are done and looking very nice so let's connect them up to the 4 inch plug. To do that, I'll add a nut to the 5 16 inch by 2 inch stainless steel bolt and push them through the hole in the right connector strap. This quarter inch washer is stainless steel on one side and rubber on the other and I'll push that down the bolt with the rubber side up. That's all repeated on the left side and now the cap is placed over the bolts. Two more washers are added, this time with rubber side down and secured with another nut. Using an allen wrench, the nut is tightened securely and then a few more nuts and metal washers are added to the post for convenience. This piece is finished. I'm really happy with it, and when I dry fit it into the casing and screw it into position, I'm starting to get excited. We're going to need a way to secure the bubbler to the side, so using some leftovers from the 2 inch pipe, I'll very carefully cut two 3 quarter inch thick circles, then use a wood 2x4 to hold the piece flat while I trim off the top. What I've done is created a clip for our bubbler, and you can see it clips easily onto the tube and holds it firmly in place. The other circle is cut and a belt sander used to match the pieces as closely as possible. I've got some left about one and a half inches long. I'll use some acrylic glue to secure the clips to the connector rods and after two minutes they're firm but will still take over two days to fully cure. While those are setting I'll use scissors to cut my poly tube at 20 inches and another piece at two inches. The two inch piece connects to a one way check valve and gets inserted into the swivel elbow. This will prevent anything from flowing back into the generator. The 20 inch tube goes on the other end of the valve and then connects to one of the bubbler elbows. It looks like we're ready to attach the clips to the body, so let's use the bubbler body as a form for spacing the clips and with the generator on its side, find where it balances. That looks good there, so acrylic glue is added to the clips and replaced on the body. When it sets, I'll use a little more glue in the gaps and remove the bubbler to let it cure. In the meantime, we can ready 6 cups of distilled water and some flakes of potassium hydroxide. 4 teaspoons of flakes will act as a catalyst to help the electricity flow. So when they're stirred in, we can open the generator body and attach a coffee filter to filter the fluid into the super clean casing. The filter is removed and thread tape is added to the cap, then the generator plates are slowly inserted into the solution and screwed in watertight. To finish up, we can remove the top cap from the bubbler, add some water and screw it back together. The remainder of the poly tube is attached to the bubbler elbow, and there it is, a sexy looking hydroxy generator. This system produces an extremely powerful oxyhydrogen gas. Running on two car batteries, it'll make about five liters. And people say, how oh, does this reduce sea level? Well, if you look at it, you're using the ocean and water to fuel all the cars and engines of the world. So we're definitely reducing the rivers and the oceans. Let me see 
what a HHO generator can do from run bikes to cars to stove. I don't see what it can do. So we need this invention for the world. And how will it reduce um, ocean levels? Well, if you make it on a large scale basis where all the oil well, all the oil, um, oil tanks that store oil on shore that takes out miles and miles of land, if we put these metal plates inside of them and run ocean water and river water from the ocean and the rivers which are rising constantly into these tanks and use solar panels to separate the water and turn it into hydrogen and oxygen then we can fuel the world for a million years in a, <clears throat> in, a, in a way that's healthy for the environment and how will this reduce um, air pollution well, you also are producing oxygen, so if you reduce a lot of oxygen from these machines in large cities like China, I've seen you guys um, make fans to blow the, the, um, the smog out, but that won't work. If you build these machines underground and use and release, you keep the hydrogen for fuel and you release the oxygen, then you will make these cities much cleaner, you will reduce air pollution, and people will live a hundred years longer with increased oxygen in the atmosphere. So, thank you. Um, <clears throat> this invention is also needed for places like India where there's constant flooding. This invention is needed for places, I'm, just think, I'm thinking of starting in Haiti. We can make these small ones with a small cell and you can have um, stoves for everyone they don't have to cut down trees anymore and burn all the trees to make coal and this will have a good impact on the whole world so you guys can donate at kingjason18 at gmail.com i'll leave the links below thank you and if you don't believe global warming is real you can look at the other video that um that comes after this and you'll see what's happening in the, G in the beaches in jamaica this one touched my heart dearly because i come from jamaica and i love the beaches there but sea level rise in five years has completely wiped out the beaches thank you In July 2013, Live at Seven first visited the popular Helshar Beach, only to find that there wasn't much beach left. We returned just last week, in November 2015, only to find again that places where we were able to interview persons two years earlier were now underwater. It seems the beach has gone for a swim and hasn't returned. Think it's mere hyperbole? Look for yourselves. Hellshire in July 2013 and Hellshire now. If they don't do something about, about it right now, we're going to find that the water just going to take over the whole, the whole beach. Take over the whole beach, that means a lot of stars that is here, we have to just move. Yeah, or a little more you're going to have, when you, re, when you come into Hellshire, you're going to have to just drive in the water.